Hi, I'm Chandrish Maharaj. I'm the Vice President for Finance of Trinidad and Tobago Medical Students Association. I'm currently a year three medical student, MBBS class of 2022. And today I'll be demonstrating for you a cardiovascular exam. But before I demonstrate this cardiovascular exam, I would like to outline a few steps for you. I hope that this video, this tutorial, would be helpful, um, helpful for you in your preparation for your OSCE examinations. So firstly, you need to dress professionally. Guys, you need to wear a white shirt, a uh, shirtja, white shirt shirtja, or um, a white shirt or shirtja with dark trousers. Ladies, dress modestly with your white skills coat. In addition, the tools you would need for this examination are your stethoscope. You'll also need hand sanitizer and a measuring tape. So, like any other examination, there are four main steps to this physical examination. Firstly, inspection, followed by palpation, then percussion, and lastly, auscultation. But before you do all these things, firstly, you need to introduce yourself to the patient, confirm the, na the name and age of the patient, explain what the examination entails, and gain consent from the patient. Also, the cardiovascular exam is to be performed at a 45 degree angle. So ensure that the patient is lying comfortably at a 45 degree angle. And this exam also requires exposure of the chest. So make sure the patient is adequately exposed. So you'd begin your examination at the base of the bed, inspecting generally. So what you would be looking for, signs of active precordium. You would be looking at the chest for spider nevi, any scars, um, any chest wall deformities, you would comment on the symmetry of the chest. You would also, at the base of the bed, assess for pitting edema by pressing on the ankles, right? You would then move up the right side of the patient. That is very important, guys. You must conduct the examination at the right side of the patient. So you would ask for the arms, the hands, you inspect the hands for peripheral sinusis. You would inspect for Janeway lesions, ulzer nodes. You would inspect for splinter hemorrhages. You would assess capillary fill time, and you would assess um, Shamrock's window. So why are we assessing this? Those are signs of congestive heart failure and infective endocarditis. After assessing the hands, you would want to palpate the pulse. So you palpate the pulse, comment on the rate, rhythm, and character. You would also um, assess for radio radial delay and radio femoral delay. After doing that, you would ask for the patient's blood pressure. You would then move on to assess for collapsing pulse by raising the arm of the patient. But before doing that, please ask the patient if there's any pain in the shoulder. Failure to do that can result in you the loss of a mark during your OSCE examination. After checking for collapsing pulse, you move to the face. So general inspection of the face. You will look at the eyes, assess for corneal arcus, xanthal asthma. You would also check the mucous membranes for um, anemia. You would then move to the mouth. In, in inspecting the mouth, you ask the patient to open his, his, his or her mouth, inspect the mouth for corneal arcus, sorry, inspect the mouth for angular stomatitis, central sinusis, high arch palate, and you can comment on the denticia as well. After the mouth, you would move on to palpating the trachea. So what you're assessing is, you're assessing for tracheal deviation, essentially. After assessing for tracheal deviation, you move on to the chest. You palpate the chest for um, paraspinal heaves and thrills. But before doing that, it is important to assess for dextrocardia and localize the uh, mitral, the apex beat. Um, it is usually localized in the fifth intercostal space, the left fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line. Um, after doing that, you would then auscultate all four valves of the heart and then ask the patient to perform two maneuvers to assess for mitral and aortic uh, murmurs. Um, after doing that, you would uh, auscultate the lung bases to assess for pulmonary edema 
or any coarse crackles, etc. Uh, lastly, at the back, you would want to assess for sacral edema. After doing that, you ask the patient to lie back down, where you would assess the size of the liver by palpating and percussing for any hepatomegaly. Um, that basically concludes the exam. So what you would want to do is thank the patient and then summarize for your examiner. So as I said before, ideally, this examination needs to be performed with the patient lying at a 45 degree angle. But bear with us, we're just improvising and using the resources we have available to us right now. So I'll begin the examination. Hi, good day. My name is Chandrish Maharaj. I'm a year three medical student. And today I've been asked to perform a cardiovascular exam on you. What that would entail is me having a look and feel of your, hand, your hands, face, chest, and then listening with the stethoscope at the end. Is that okay with you? Can I just confirm your name and age, please? Nickel, 19 years old. Nickel, 19 years old. Okay, nice to meet you, Nickel. Um, this exam requires exposure of the chest. Um, so I would like to, well, I have to ask you to remove your T-shirt. Is that okay with you? You do so now, please. Thank you. On general inspection, Nickel seems to be lying in no, cardiovascular, no cardiopulmonary distress. There's no signs of active precordium. There's no spider nevi. There's no visible scars. The chest wall is symmetrical. There's no chest wall deformities. I'm just going to press on your feet. Is there any pain? There's no signs of pitting edema. All right, Nickel, can I just see your hands, please? All right, so Nickel's hands are warm and moist. There are no signs of genuine lesions or ulcer nodes. You turn around to me. There's no peripheral cyanosis, no splinter hemorrhages. Capillary refill time is less than two seconds. Could you just do this for me, please? All right, Shamus window is preserved. There's no signs of clubbing. I'm just going to have a feel of your uh, pulse now, okay? Right, so Nickel's pulse is approximately 72 beats per minute with a regularly regular rhythm with good character. I'm just going to assess for radio femoral delay now. Can I have a feel of your boot pulses? Right, so there's no radio radial delay. I'm just going to have a feel of the femoral pulse, okay? Is that okay? There's no radio femoral delay. At this point in time, I'd ask for the patient's blood pressure. Is there any pain in the arm? All right, so I'm just going to lift your arm, right? I want you to relax with me. Let your arm go floppy. I don't want you to help me as I lift, all right? All right, there's no collapse in pulse. Okay, Nicole, you're doing fine so far. I'm just going to have a look at your face now, okay? So in, on inspecting the eyes, there's no signs of xanthal asthma or corneal arcus. Could you look up for me, please? All right, mucous memories are pink and moist. I'm just going to have a look in your mouth now. Could you open up for me, please? All right, there's no central cyanosis. There's no high arch palate. There's no angular stomatitis. And Nickel, your dentistry is very good. I just want to have a feel of the neck now, OK? This may be a bit uncomfortable, but bear with me. Could you look up a little bit? All right, there's no tracheal deviation. Okay, I'm just going to localize the apex beat now. Okay, so the apex beat is localized in the left fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line. I'm just going to have a feel of your chest again, okay? All right, there are no parasternal heaves. And there are no thrills. OK, I'm just going to have a listen of your um, chest now with my stethoscope. OK, Nicole? Mitral, tricuspid, pulmonary, aorta. All right, normal S1 and S2 sounds were heard throughout. Nicole, I'm just going to have to ask you to turn to your left for me, please. 
take a deep breath in and out. All right, no mitral murmurs to it. And could you sit up for me? Take a deep breath in and out. All right, there are no aortic murmurs. I'm just going to have a listen. That's your lung basis now, okay? All right, no coarse crackles to it. I'm just, I'm just going to have a press of your lower back now. There's no sacral edema. Okay, Nicole. So the final thing I would like to ask you to do in this exam is lie back down for me. I'm just going to assess the size of your liver. So I'm just going to press on your tummy. Could you put your hands at the side? All right. All right. I'm just going to have a tap now, okay? Could you put your hand here for me, please? All right, so I'm just going to measure with my tape now. Okay, so Nikhil's uh, liver is approximately 10 centimeters, so he has no hepatomegaly. Thank you very much, Nikhil. That concludes this exam. So today I performed a cardiovascular exam on Nikhil, a 19-year-old male. The findings of this were consistent with a normal cardiovascular exam. Ideally, to conclude this exam, I would, perform an, I would perform an ECG, and I would also do a chest X-ray. Thank you.